everyone, before we start today's video, I have some super exciting news if you haven't heard it already. Bumblebee, the new channel Dewey and I are hosting, is gonna be launching very, very soon, and we would love your support. It's gonna feature a lot of weird stuff, and hopefully even weirder stuff in the future. I'm just excited for where it's gonna go. Uh, so please head on over and subscribe so you can be the first person to like and watch and comment on a video and let us know how we're doing and what else you wanna see. I'm also really curious for that video. Let us know in the comments like what else you wanna see in terms of YouTube stuff, cause we, we love you guys. We wanna know what you love too. Anyways, let's start with today's video. I'm your host Rachel Fisher and we're back again with most amazing top 10. Today we are covering weird things found in churches to churches found in weird places. Today's list covers all this and more of our top 10 weirdest things found in churches. I'm your host Rachel Fisher and let's get started. Number 10, the Duomo of Florence, Italy. This is one of the coolest places I've ever been and I had to put it on this list. I've been to Italy once in my life and this was the highlight of the trip for me and I did not expect it to be because I was like, oh, this is a really beautiful church. And then I was like, whoa, living Assassin's Creed. And it was amazing. Besides living out your Assassin's Creed Ezio dreams, not only is the cathedral stunning, but the trip to the top is nothing like you'd expect. I walked in expecting to solely marvel at the frescoes immediately inside, which are breathtaking. But then there was a guy by a small door where you could pay to travel the 463 steps it takes to get to the top. I'm not the one to skip a leg day, so challenge accepted. It wasn't just a spiral staircase, which honestly, thank goodness because I would have huh. but anyways it was that plus scaling steep narrow pathways and traveling through narrow tunnels whoever pictured monks as rounded and out of shape was dead wrong especially if they were climbing that every day number nine the Bronston goddess you would expect statues of the Virgin Mary and Jesus to be present in churchyards and chapels but this little stone sculpture isn't really as self-explanatory in the 1920s in Bronston and Rutland their All Saints Church front steps needed replacing. As they removed the stones, they came across this strange little sculpture. With two noses, a tongue sticking out, protruding breasts, and bulging eyes, no one could quite place who or what it was supposed to be. Some believe it's a medieval guardian sculpture to frighten off evil spirits or some kind of malicious monarch depiction or even a pagan deity, but the style of carving doesn't match anything previously known, so it could be anything and remains a mystery to this day. Number eight, the devil's footprints, ooh. One night, the devil himself, for whatever reason, tried to steal the bell from the tower of St. Dave's Church in Lanarth. A vicar, however, awoke to the noise and chased the fiend into the graveyard and the man's foot ignited a fiery footprint on the stone before he left. A similar case befell St. Mary's Churchyard in Newington, Kent, but this time the devil succeeded in stealing the bells. I don't know what it is about the devil and bells. He just loves them. He wants them for himself. The devil leapt from the tower with the bells in a bag and left a fiery footprint on a stone before he left. He accidentally dropped the bells into a stream in his escape and a local witch said that in order to retrieve them they'd need four pure white cows. When they found the cows, the cows seemed to be doing the job until an onlooker was like, look, there's a black dot on one of them. And then, then the bells went back into the stream because they weren't pure white. But you can actually visit the stone with said footprint atop it, and it is said that if you place a finger on top and walk around it three times, it will bring you good luck. Better luck than the devil had at least, he just couldn't get a handle on those bells. Number seven, St. Catherine of Siena's head. There's gonna be a lot of heads on this list. So get ready for a lot of head puns. Out of all the heads we are going to discuss today, Catherine, Catherine's looks the best. Like she's got some kind of secret to the whole like decomposition thing. Like she looks pretty good. When she was just seven years old, Catherine had visions that led her to pursue a life in the church with fervor. Her family tried to marry her off, so she cut her hair and scalded her body and ran off to become a nun. When she joined the nunnery, she had a powerful vision of Jesus placing a ring made of his skin, the flesh that was removed during his circumcision, which was revered at the time for some reason, and claimed Catherine in marriage. For the rest of her life, Catherine claimed that she could always see the flesh ring on her finger. Her miracles included levitating during prayer and receiving stigmata, which are holy bodily marks. She died in Rome, but people in Siena, her hometown, wanted a part of her there. So they 
went to Rome and stole her head. When the guards caught them, they prayed to Catherine, and when the guards looked in the bag, it was entirely filled with rose petals. When the guards left, the head returned, and it is said that that was her final miracle. They also have a piece of her thumb, which isn't mentioned in the story, but I assume that turned into a rose petal as well. Number six, the tongue and jaw of Saint Anthony. Have you ever seen an 800 year old tongue? Do you want to? Well, you're in luck. Okay, so we've talked about heads being prized, but this church decided to go ahead and covet something else instead. Saint Anthony was known for giving terrific and captivating sermons all across Italy and France that seemed to have a unique pull to them. Due to his work in life, Anthony was canonized after his death, but it took 30 years for his body to be exhumed and buried in a new basilica. It was then that they discovered that his tongue and jaw looked miraculously like it hadn't decomposed a single day. So they buried the rest of his body and put the jaw and tongue in the sacred display case. Saint Anthony is the saint of lost things and people go there to pray to him that they will find what they've lost. Hopefully Anthony doesn't feel like he lost anything when he, they took his tongue. The Church of Transfiguration. This church is interesting not because of what you may find inside it, but because of what you won't. Should you choose to visit Kizzy Island, you may want to spend some time at the Church of Transfiguration to marvel at the architecture and learn more about the unique way it was built. The church was entirely constructed out of wood and does not include a single nail or screw. The entire church is holding itself together through a series of intricately placed interlocking logs. Now some when they think of that would be picturing like a simple log cabin kind of thing, but no, it's incredibly intricate and features rounded teardrop domes and fine points. So what an incredible architectural feat. Number 4, St. John's head, another one. Imagine having a head everyone wants to get their hands on. Like just imagine being that person. This object, it sounds weird to be calling it an object. Anyways, this weird preserved head has been found in several places across the globe. And unless St. John the Baptist had several heads, it can't all be the real thing. And also, how did you even find it? But the most famous places you can go to decide for yourself are the Basilica of St. Sylvester the First in Rome, or the Sedens Church in Munich, Germany. Both claim to have the head on display for all to see of the legendary John the Baptist. Except in Rome, they've chosen to serve it up on a silver platter, while in Munich, they've cloaked it in fine fabric and jewels. The head also appears in Damascus in a mosque, also covered by fabric. So, I don't know, maybe the skull takes turns? Who knows? Okay, we're getting to our top three guys. If you like this video, you know what to do. Remember to like, comment, subscribe because it helps us out and we love you for it. And also lets us know we're doing a good job. Number three, the head of Oliver Plunkett. Here is yet another church that's ahead of its game. Oliver Plunkett was an Irish Catholic Archbishop who died as a martyr and was the last in fact during the Popish plot. Long story short, when Henry VIII left the church, centuries of strife followed between the Catholics and the Protestants, which led to the alleged Popish plot. A rumored alleged plot by the Catholics to kill Charles II and put his Catholic brother James on the throne. Whether or not the plot was actually real, no one knows. Either way, Oliver Plunkett was arrested drawn and quartered in 1681 and remains one of the most famous Catholic figures in Ireland to this day. After his death, his head was first brought to Rome and hidden in 1921, and now sits in St. Peter's Church in Drogheda, Ireland. He's got a scorch mark on his face because apparently someone tried to burn the head before it was saved by his friends. So it's, it's there, you can see it, and there's only one of them this time. Number two, the Sinead Chapel. So yes, today we are covering weird things found in churches, but what about churches found inside weird things? Located in Alouvi, Belfast in northern France is a church inside an oak tree. Sinead Chapel, aka Chapel Oak, as it translates to, honestly looks like a church designed for a scene in a Tim Burton film. The oak tree is over 800 years old, and legend says that William the Conqueror chose this tree to pray beneath before he left for England. When lightning hit the tree in the 17th century, it sealed the tree's fate as becoming a place of worship. There is an entire spiral staircase that surrounds the tree with two tiny chapels inside. It was later converted to a temple of reason to save it from French revolutionary atheists who tried to burn it down. But today it remains and you can still visit it today. You can still visit it today either to pray or marvel at the spectacle. It's up to you. Number 1, Basilica of St. Ursula. A church 
made of bones. A sign of respect to a group of women made martyrs when they arrived in Rome. Basilica of St. Ursula in Cologne is the largest mosaic made from human body parts and according to legend, they include the bones of an English princess named Ursula. St. Ursula lived somewhere between 300 to 600 AD and decided to go on a pilgrimage in Europe. But given the time as well as the fact that she was a princess, she could not travel alone. So she took a force of a thousand virgin women with her. Their ship allegedly blew across the sea to Rome in a single day, but then another ambitious wind swept them off course to Cologne. Unfortunately for Ursula and her league, the Huns were ravaging Europe at that time and were captured shortly into their journey. The elegant way of saying what happened is to say that they were martyred, so we'll say that. Relics of the princess were housed in the basilica, but in the Middle Ages, a pit of bones were discovered. The bones were believed to be those of the princess and her followers, and they were placed within the church so that they may finally be at rest. Unfortunately, due to forensic analysis, the bones also include men, dogs, and babies. So I guess there are a lot of questions here that need answers. So if they're not St. Ursula's, whose are they? And that was our top 10 list of top 10 weirdest things found in churches. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment on what you're looking forward to seeing. And make sure to also do that on Bumblebee. Thanks so much guys. And go ahead, subscribe there as well. I've been your host, Rachel Fisher. And until next time, take care. Mm -hmm.